Hey there, rednecks, preppies, redneck preppies. It's me, the redneck preppy. How you doing today? Great. Good. If you're an angler or hunter, you may have heard of Solunar Tables. And if you have, you might think they're the province of grandpa with astrological levels of science behind them. Is that true? I'm going to look at what Solar Lunar Tables are, their history, how they're calculated, and most importantly, are they actually useful? So what is a solar table? Well, as you can see on the screen, it is, as the name suggests, a table. The table generally covers a month and you'll see a series of times for each day. The times give you information such as sunrise and sunset, moonrise and moonset. Now, what is of interest, at least to anglers and hunters, are the major and minor times. Major times are those in which fish and animals are likely to be most active, and those periods tend to last for about two hours after the start of the posted time. So for the daytime hours of January the 1st, the most active time, at least according to this table, would have been from 6.51 a.m. to 8.51 a.m. For the evening, it would have presumably been 7.14 p.m. to 9.14 p.m. The minor times are when fish and animals were less active compared to the major, though still more so than outside of the windows for them. Those tend to last about an hour. There are two major and minor times for each day, and each major time occurs about 12 and a half hours after the previous one, as is with each minor time. Now, so lunar tables are most accurate when they're for your specific area. The chart on the screen is for Perry Sound, Ontario. Obviously, the sun and moon times will be different in your area if you're at a different latitude. These days, so lunar tables can be found in applications that you can load on your phone or even your watch and update automatically to where you are. Now you know what a Sol Lunar Table is. It probably won't be a surprise to you that fishers and hunters throughout human history have used environmental cues to try and predict when game was going to be available or on the move. We have plenty of evidence to suggest that ancient human beings positioned themselves or traveled where necessary to take advantage of migrating animals something that they would have probably determined by things like the sun and temperatures, among other variables. Now, so lunar tables aren't quite that ancient, though they're informed by those examples. In 1926, famed angler and outdoorsman John Alden Knight decided to study the activity patterns of fish. He put together a list of 33 variables that he believed influenced the behavior of fish. Going over them, he managed to eliminate all but three variables he believed were the most important, sun, moon, and tide. Now, Knight argued that while tides were an important consideration, at least for anglers, so too was the relationship between the sun and the moon's positions, that is to say, gravitational pull. To prove this, he examined the details of record catches, eventually pulling together over 200 examples. He found that over 90% of the record catches were made during the new moon when the effects of the periods appear to be the greatest, and during the actual times of the solunar periods he identified as major and minor. Expanding his research from 1935 to 1939, he also studied game birds and animals and found that those two also fit into the solunar pattern. He eventually published his first Solunar Table in 1936, and incidentally, you can still buy a copy of his original Solunar Tables. Now, if you're tempted to think that Knight was some kind of old-school kook who, you know, glommed together bits of folklore and informal observations, I'll say it again. Knight was an expert angler and outdoorsman and published many books and articles on hunting and fishing that are still influential today. He spent more time outdoors doing stuff and observing the world around him than most people. And there is science to back him up. 
Most saltwater anglers will nod at the notion that tides influence fish behavior. It's well known that not only do temperatures influence bass spawning, but it's also very likely that the phase of the moon plays a part as well. I could sit here and list many examples of links, both formal, informal, and otherwise, between sun, moon, and tides and the fish and animals of the world. Biologist Frank Brown, for example, showed that oyster feeding was connected to how gravity affected tides. Now we're starting to get into the meat and potatoes of so lunar tables. How they're calculated. Now, if you were listening earlier, you might remember that I mentioned that in addition to tides, which again, only really apply to anglers, Knight argued that the positions of the sun and moon relative to each other played an important role when game activity increased. Now, working off the premise that the sun and moon's combined gravitational forces affected animal behavior, Knight's, and everyone else's since, so lunar tables are essentially times in which the moon is directly overhead or underfoot. As I said before, there are two types of so lunar periods, major and minor. Major periods begin as soon as the moon is overhead. Typically, that lunar transit is when animals are most active. Minor periods are about halfway in between the two major periods when the moon passes the horizon at moonrise and moonset. So what we're really talking about is astronomy and its ability to predict the movement of the earth, sun, and moon relative to each other. So we get to the question that I imagine most interests people. Are solar lunar tables actually useful in predicting fish and animal behavior? And to that question, I have a clear and definitive answer. Depends. So lunar tables are one variable out of several that you have to consider when it comes to planning your hunting and fishing. And if you're expecting them to be perfect predictors of game behavior, you're going to be disappointed. Take, for example, climate. If your favorite game doesn't like when it rains or snows, it's too hot, too cold, and that's what it's like outside, well, so lunar tables be damned. Barometer falling? I don't care what the tables say about when my chances of catching fish are the best. I know it's going to be harder. Another is timing. A good example uh, I came across was that of walleye. If you're faced with there having been a major solar lunar period just after midnight and there was a full moon, so the you know walleye had an easy time of feeding, good luck trying to catch them the next day, even if the solar lunar table says it should be an excellent time of it. Conversely, if there was little moonlight in that scenario, the next major period might be a bit more successful than not. It's also a thing that some fish and game just don't care about so lunar tables. They'll move, feed, and be active on their own schedule. So even if you put stock in so lunar tables, you can't take them as if they have some sort of biblical certainty about them. But okay, I'm not actually answering the question, am I? Do I think they have any efficacy? Although I've cast a jaundiced eye in the past at the idea of so lunar tables, I've also spent enough time outdoors to observe the link between certain times of the day, presumably related to Knight's position of the moon thesis, and success rates. I think solar lunar tables can be used as a guide for when you should concentrate your activities. If you've taken the other factors into account, the conditions are favorable, the solar lunar tables are telling you when the fishing or hunting should be best, those are the times that you probably want to ensure that you're out there. It's up to you then to do your part. Or just use it as an excuse. Who can argue when you come home gameless and just simply respond with, well, not much I could do since the moon wasn't in the proper position relative to the sun and the earth. Could I? At any rate, I hope you found today's video at least be vaguely entertaining and mildly informative. As always, I hope your hunting and fishing trips regardless of how you plan to take them, are always successful. Take care, and bye-bye.